Good morning, everyone. It looks like we have lots of people on this morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're tuning in a little early in hopes that you can guess where we are. We played this game last week and we had a lot of fun with it. So this week we're giving you another chance to guess where we are. Virtual seining session number six. Any guesses? We'll get started here at 10 o'clock on the button like we always do. Any guesses? Drop it in the comments below for where we are right now. I think this one's going to be easier than last week's location because there's some very significant clues. No guesses you're going to make me give you hints already? Everyone is shy this morning. It's a gorgeous day, so I hope you go outside after this, or if you're outside watching. No guesses. Okay, first clue. I'm south of the Barnegat Inlet. We are south of the Barnegat Inlet. Thank you. First clue. <laughs> Kevin is here with me. I'm just going to continue panning. We have this gorgeous view in front of us. We are south of the Barnegat Inlet. Can I get any guesses? as to where. What time is it? If no one guesses, I'll tell you at 10. Maybe I should think of another trivia question to ask in the meanwhile. If you can't guess where we are. What? Oh. Hints. Hints. Well, I, I said I'm south of the Barnegat Inlet. Uh, that's your first hint. That's your first hint. I'll give you another hint. Across the bay there, and this is Barnegat Bay. I hope by now you would have guessed that. Um, so across the bay there is a huge swath of preserved land owned by the um, Forsyth Refuge. Still nada. Everyone is super quiet today. Um, behind me, which you can't see because I'm not turning all the way, another hint, there is a parking lot. All right, so you pretty much have gotten almost 360 degree view of where we are right now. Here, I'll give you a different view. You wanna see, see what the bay looks like today where we are. For those of you who are still with us, thank you for sticking around. We're going to start at 10 on the button like we always do, but we have this, this gorgeous view and I'm always excited to put it on the live video so you can see it. I hope that you are getting ready to go out and about with your family um, because it is gorgeous outside. The breeze is, there's a nice cool breeze where we are and the sun is shining and beautiful puffy clouds. All right, I'm gonna stop making you dizzy going in circles. Nobody wants to guess where we are. Um, all right, two more minutes until we get started. Today we are in virtual seining session number six. Uh, we are, or five, I already lost count. Did I say it was five? I believe we're at six. We're at six, right? Okay, virtual seining session number six. Uh, we're gonna tell you at 10 o'clock where we landed today and we're super excited. There's multiple habitats to talk about again today, multiple topics that we can go over. Um, so we're super excited. We're always excited. 9.59, come on, who's gonna guess where we are? Uh, all right, I'll give you another clue. Uh, we're south of the Barnegat Inlet and we are um, facing southwest right now. Southwest. What? Yeah, I know. I didn't want to give them that clue. I feel like if I give them that clue, then they know exactly where we are. <laughs> All right, it's 959. Name that bridge. 
If you can name that bridge, then I'll, I'll accept it as knowing where we are. We're in Barnegat Bay, and there's only three bridges that go over the bay. So there's only three possible locations that we could be if we are, this is, we are facing, we're facing north right now. So I'm on the barrier island, but there are two barrier islands in Barnegat Bay. So, uh, nope, we have a bunch of quiet fans today. It's okay. Nobody wants to guess. All right. Oh, that dragonfly is super cool. If I thought I could catch it, I would show you. All right. I think I think it's time for us to get started because we got it. we have a shy crowd today. Hopefully the camera is straight. Mostly. That's so hard to see. There we go. Okay. All right, it's 10 on the button. How we look? Looking good. Hey, Facebook. Good morning. Kevin's just adjusting the camera. Um, we are at Ship Bottom Boat Ramp. For those of you who didn't want to guess, <laughs> by the way, this is Kevin. Hi. If you don't remember him by now. Um, I'm Grace Ann. Uh, we are from Save Barnegat Bay, and every Thursday we tune in to do a seining program virtually with you, bringing the bay straight to your phone or computer screen. So, we are at Ship Bottom Boat Ramp. That is Route 72. We are on the barrier island in Ship Bottom, so the ocean's over there, Barnegat Bay is over there. And Some people call it Manahawkin Bay. Oh, true. Okay, so depending on where you're from, you might call this Bar Manahawkin Bay. Um, both Manahawkin Bay and the Little Egg and Barnegat Bay are all part of that same body of water. So uh, there is a lot to talk about today. We have multiple habitats. We already saw a bunch of fish, so we're really excited. Kevin was like, I want to pull the same net. And I was like, not yet. They want to see us pull the same net. So um, we're going to get started. All right, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you yet. Let's get started. <laughs> Here you go. We caught a few surprises, we'll tell you about them.
everybody. Thanks for staying with us if you're still with us. Um, hopefully the sound of the vehicles aren't bothering you too much. Uh, we caught a lot of different things. I'm so excited to show you. I always kind of abandon Kevin because I don't want to leave you abandoned for too long. Um, so we caught some fish that we're going to compare in front of the camera so that you can ID them easier. But while Kevin finishes up pulling that uh, sea net, I would like to talk to you about some things that we found along the way before we got started. So, uh, this little guy, I'm gonna come over here and show you. Let's see how many people stuck with us. 11, very nice. Hi, Shannon. Oh, Shannon, you should be out here. You would be a wealth of knowledge. Uh, okay, so this is um, codium, which looks green like a plant does, but it's actually an algae, uh, so it can easily be mistaken for a plant, and it is considered a seaweed. It is a green algae, and uh, it does not have roots or leaves or stems like a plant does, so uh, we were able to look it up, so obviously I used Google to confirm that but you can also look at it and observe that it doesn't have those parts like a plant does, but it does use the sun to photosynthesize or uh, create energy for itself. So it gets energy from the sun. That's what that green um, coloration is for. Um, so just kind of a cool, kind of rubbery feeling creature. Um, definitely something fun for the kids if you do find it, totally harmless. Um, it is considered a seaweed and an algae, not a plant. Uh, what do you got? Shore shrimp. Kevin's got our trusty shore shrimp. Seem to come up every time in the net. Yeah. Shore shrimp, always like to bring them up. They are part of our food chain, extremely important. Um, it looks like we have uh, both pregnant and... Uh, do you know if those are male or just eggs. not pregnant? One's holding eggs and one's not. See how, see how this one's holding like a pouch of stuff? That's her eggs. And this one doesn't have as much stuff in her abdomen. So those pregnant females are really great because the eggs in their stage right now are food. And then obviously if they're reproducing, there's a lot more of them to be a part of the food chain. So thank you. Awesome. All right, can I talk about the tourniquet? So before I forget, uh, we, d we got all kinds of fish and stuff, but there's also other creatures that don't move as fast that you might get, um, might get forgotten, if you will, in the, in the mix. So I'm going to come real close and show you this. This is a piece of eelgrass, and you can kind of see the eelgrass underneath. Um, underneath the red coloration and something is living on the eelgrass and so we're gonna see how good my camera is on this piece of eelgrass is a creature called a tunicate and a tunicate is an invertebrate which means it doesn't have a backbone um, and it isn't a plant it's in fact an animal and the interesting thing about it is and gosh I wish you were here to see it there's little individual creatures called zooids, and I'm going to stand still for a second. Maybe my camera will focus on them. Each one of those individual creatures create this one big mat of tunicate on this eelgrass leaf. Oh, there's some, there's some good um, view of it. The interesting thing about these guys is they're, they're like clams in that they use a filter to eat. So they are filter feeders. Um, they use their siphon to siphon water into their bodies and then uh, consume the food and then siphon the wastewater out of their bodies. And so kind of an interesting invertebrate that you might have overlooked. And just as another kind of point, obviously if there's some tunicates we can balance in our ecosystem, uh, but if there's too many tunicates and they're all covering that eelgrass, it's going to be extremely difficult for that eelgrass to photosynthesize or use the sun to get energy because the tunicate is blocking that green blade leaf that it would be getting its energy from. So kind of an interesting little invertebrate. Uh, it does look very similar to the red bearded sponge 
Uh, sponge is also an animal colony of filter feeders, so easily mistaken, different shape. Uh, so this one's more orangey, and the red bearded sponge tends to be a little bit more red. So just as like a fun kind of invertebrate info sesh. What do you got? You were ready to bring something to me. a needlefish. Um, it's in the gar family. Um, you can see it has a, a large needle nose. Um, and it's very jumpy and very fragile. It needs a lot of oxygen. So I'm going to let you see him real quick and then he's going back in the water. Nice. But it's a long fish. You'll see him on the top of the water a lot of times. You see there. Nice. Yeah. His mouth. You see all his teeth. Um, they usually are on the top of the water. Um, if you're crabbing or fishing for snapper blues, you'll see these V's on the top of the water and it's usually these guys that are the culprits. But I'm gonna put him back in the bed because they're rather sensitive. So uh, we did catch a pipefish. Needlefish and pipefish tend to be confused because they do both have that really elongated snake-like body. Um, do we do we have the pipefish or do we lose it in the? We lost it. We lost it. It's okay. I've shown you a pipefish a few different times over the weeks. We always catch them. Uh, the pipefish is the one that's related to the seahorse. Um, they also have that really long body. They have a tube kind of face, uh, very similar to a seahorse. And so I love talking about the difference between needlefish and pipefish because they look so similar and because kids often say needlefish um, and they don't realize they're two different animals. So just some little differences. Um, what do we got? Mummy chugs? chugs? Mummy chugs. A staple of Barnegat Bay. We have, I always try to struggle to see if you can see it. Awesome mummy chugs, nice big fat girls. They are a staple of Barnegat Bay. Uh, they are uh, eaters of mosquitoes and prey. They are, they prey on mosquitoes. Um, so they are extremely important in our marsh habitat. There's lots of them. They are the part of the bottom of the food chain. Yeah, oh, and Kevin is reminding me that they are male and female in this jar. So the female is the larger one sitting on the bottom and the male is the more flitty one at the top. More speckling on it. Okay, males have more speckling. Let's see if you can see it in the camera. When they're breeding, they'll have more color as well. They are really a beautiful fish. I don't know how good this camera is doing a justice for them, but we're trying. Eh. All right, so I'm gonna take you on a little tour. Uh, I always like to change it up a bit. So we always, obviously we pull the seine net. That's the fun stuff, cause there's, cause there's fishes in there. But um, I wanna show you if Shannon's still watching, she's going to be so proud. I wanted to show you a living shoreline. Living shoreline is probably something that you have heard of if you're at all involved in the environmental community. Uh, living shoreline is as simple as it sounds. It's just a shoreline made of living creatures. And so a lot of times when we talk about best practices for a shoreline, we're trying to install living shorelines. And so if I'm being completely honest, it makes me a little kooky because um, our shorelines uh, should be living to begin with, but we have to kind of retrofit things we've done in the past and put back nature. And so uh, last week, if you remember, if you were here, I went looking for the living shoreline at the edge of the marsh where we were um, just south of Caddis Island and I went looking for ribbed mussels and this right here is a gorgeous example of a living shoreline that has a native sedge species growing on it which is the grass and it's living because all these little dots that you see all these little shellfish those are all ribbed mussels ribbed mussels are a shellfish. They have two shells, so they're bivalves, bi meaning two, valves meaning they're shells. Those two shells together um, protect their soft, gooey inside body, and they also are filter feeders, just like our tunicates and our sponges. So they have uh, filters that they filter food in and out of their bodies. And so you might be curious to know why they're exposed right now and if they're dead. Uh, a lot of times ribbed mussels in Barnegat Bay can be exposed at low tide, uh, which is totally natural. And then they just hang out. And then when the tide comes back up and covers them up again, then they can continue eating. So 
I'm gonna try to get real close. There's all kinds of fish in the water that I'm totally gonna scare. You probably can see them. Um, but the reason I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about uh, mussels, and if you look real close, you can see some of them are open. Uh, mussels have these things called bissel threads. So if you've ever cleaned a mussel and you have to pull those strings off of the, off of the shell before you can cook them in your marinara sauce, uh, those bissel threads are kind of like cement threads that keep them rooted right where they are. Once you unroot them, they can't reattach themselves. This is where they live for their entire life. And the reason they're so important to our ecosystem here is because they hold the edge of the shoreline together. So the roots of the plant certainly do that as well. And then the mussels that you see along the edge of the shoreline are also gonna hold that shoreline together. And so uh, when you start to see shorelines that don't have ribbed mussels or strong root systems, you start to see um, what Barnegat Bay Partnership is looking at in their project called sloughing. Uh, sloughing and erosion, and there's a few different words. Basically, all it means is the edge of the marsh is starting to erode away. And so that can be from lots of different things. Sometimes it's from storm and wave action. Sometimes it's from boat, uh, boat action. But um, basically what I wanna show you is this shoreline because it looks really healthy. This tiny little pocket has a lot of rib muscles on it, which is awesome. I'm gonna just swing around here, give you a different view. Um, hopefully you can see the fish that are flitting around in that little puddle. These little pocket marsh areas are really important to the juvenile species of our bay, the younger species of our bay, because it's where they can hide, it's where they can find food, and it's really nutrient rich in this region. All of the marsh um, has a lot of nutrients in it. So here again you can see, if the lighting is good, I'm not sure, you can see the rib mussels are all along this sedge, sedge edge. Sedge edge, haha, <laughs> that rhymes. Sedge is the name of the grass. And then while I have you, um, straight across the way is Cedar Bonnet Island. It's National Forsyth Refuge land. And uh, you can access it when you're driving east over the Route 72 bridge. Uh, you can park in their little parking lot and there's some restoration projects there that you can check out. Um, some work is being done over there by Project Terrapin, Dr. John Wenick. So really beautiful pocket of, of preserved land many acres it goes all the way out all the way over there so it's really just a cool thing to still have those marshes that's so important um, for the ecology of Barnegat Bay and obviously I think those marshes and this marsh that I just pointed to are contributing to why we found such a diversity of fish on the shoreline all right enough of my chitter chatter I'm sure you want to see more cool swimming floppy squishy Oh look, can you see the fish in front of me? They're huge mommy chugs. Oh my gosh. They're so big and fat and happy. All right. I scared them all out of the marsh when I was walking back to the sea net. I abandoned Kevin again. I'm coming, I'm sorry. I got excited about living shorelines and mussels and I was teaching them about missile threads. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. We have 12 people who stuck with us. I'm always excited for the people that are dedicated that stick with me for the whole session. You guys are awesome. I don't know we're gonna disappear for a little bit, but we'll be back. <laughs> we are going to disappear for a sec. We will be back.
right, I'm gonna try to take you off the tripod again. For those of you who are still with us, yay! All right, let me show you what we caught. Uh-oh, boat wake, rut row. Silver sides, always a staple of Barnegat Bay, just like the mummy chug, super important to the ecosystem, super important to our food chain. They have that silver lateral line. I was covering the mic there. Small blue crab. Little blue crab. You can see those swimmerettes and those points on either side. Little baby guy. Definitely can still pinch you, so be careful. Got some red algae or brown algae. Actually, I'm not sure which. Definitely algae though, because it doesn't have stems, doesn't have roots, doesn't have leaves. Um, but definitely a different species. Kind of feels kind of stiff, but um, slimy at the same time. So kind of like rubber. I'll have to look that one up later too. See if we can get a good view of it. It's so hard on camera. But all of these algaes um, and plants, they, all these branches, oh, shell, oh, okay, we're switching gears. They, uh, all the, um, see how, how easily the shrimp blend in with those algaes? The, all these branches of, of, you know, photosynthesizing or plant-like material create habitat for all those small creatures. So shrimp easily blend in there. Uh, amphipods can easily blend in there. Oh, there's a baby pipefish. Baby pipefish, the member, this is different from our needlefish. This is the one related to the seahorse, has that snout, easily um, able to access the eggs of the shrimp from underneath the abdomen of their body. And obviously easily blends in with the eelgrass and the other algae in Barnegat Bay. So definitely a cool species, one of my favorite. And little tiny baby, we're gonna make sure he or she makes it back into the bay. Mr. Toadfish. Toadfish! <gasps> this is a new one, everybody. We haven't caught this one yet this year. This is an oyster toadfish. Very cool fish. Only a face a mother could love. <laughs> they are oddly ugly, but also cool looking. I love, I love their faces. And show them their their fins on the side if you yeah, can without getting spines pinched. right there. There's spines, so if you are handling these, please be careful. And then they have these beautiful fins on the side. Um, they're all multiple different colors, and um, they eat oysters, right? Put him in some water. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and put him in water so we can see him um, spread out his fins. They, they are one of. They, that is such a cool fish. I love their eyes. You can get a view of their eyes. Um, try moving your bottom hand if you can. And I think there's light coming in from that way. When he turns, you'll see it. Oyster, look at those beautiful colors. Oh, they're so pretty. And I'm going to try to see. They'll just them. sit on the bottom and they'll almost ambush their prey. They'll sit and wait. Uh, they have very strong bones in their jaw, which they are able to eat shellfish. Oyster toadfish, because they eat oysters. I can't get the camera to focus as well as I'd like it to. Okay. Um, Maybe you can see it well, but I just can't see in the screen with the sunlight. Okay. Just a pretty fish. We go this way. There we go. Hopefully you can see that little guy. Um, some people might confuse them for rockfish. They look very similar. Uh, rockfish are probably more likely out in the ocean. Well, there's another baby pipefish. A little tiny, tiny guy. Tiny little one. Back in the water you go. It's okay with you. I'm going to drag the net back in. Okay. Um, one of the things I've learned about Barnegat Bay over the years of, you know, being an educator is that all the cool stuff is in... What'd you find? I've never seen this before. What's that? A shrimp that looks to be either a leucistic or albino. What does leucistic mean? Totally white. See that? I'm trying to see... Oh gosh. Sunlight. There we go. Okay. Has anyone shrimp. ever seen that before? A shore shrimp that was all white like that? Hmm. All right, another thing to Google. Could We're going to be busy perhaps. looking stuff up. Oh, yeah, could be a molt. It's starting to molt, maybe. That could be, because these animals... So molting is when these creatures with the skeleton on the outside of their body, um, that hard shell, 
uh, they actually crawl out of that shell and expand and then re, re kind of harden. So maybe, and we're not sure, but maybe that's the beginning of its stage molting. Um, it could be just a different um, version of the same animal. Sometimes just like we have brown eyes and blue eyes and green eyes, maybe they just have different colors. So we're gonna look that up. Ask someone who might know more. So one of the things I've learned um, in doing education on Barnegat Bay uh, is that all the good stuff is in the detail because uh, we have such a shallow bay. Our creatures tend to be, and I'm not saying always, but tend to be very small. So you really have to get excited about looking for the little things, looking for the tiny little creatures that otherwise you'd overlook if you were moving too fast. You have to kind of slow down and find uh, find the little things. Um, do we want to go over to Bulkhead or no? Hmm. You want to pull? All right, so let's put you back on the tripod so that we can pull the same net one more time. We always kind of pull it about three times. And let's see if we catch any other cool stuff. This has been a great site. We've caught some really cool stuff. Either that or the first few times we pulled it was too early in the season for the bay. So I guess it's probably a combination of both. All right. Hang with us.
with a ton of people. So people are always curious to see what we're doing. Uh, so I was just, you heard me shouting. I was like, don't touch the fish without wetting your hands. Cause I want everyone to get excited about um, learning about the fish, but I don't want the fish to get hurt. So um, we caught a new fish. Kevin's gonna help me with that in one second. Uh, but I thought I would take the opportunity to talk a little bit about something else that is so obvious to me because we are at the Route 72 bridge. You can probably hear the traffic in the background. It's July uh, in Barnegat Bay watershed or in Ocean County, which are very nearly the same space. Uh, the watershed is different from the county, but um, in Ocean County, we have a lot of tourism, obviously. You know that if you try to drive anywhere in the summertime. And so the tourism is a huge driver of our economy here, obviously. And when we have tourists here, it means that we obviously have more individual people that are using our water. So I always like to talk about wastewater and stormwater and how all of those things uh, are intertwined into our water cycle. So we have the water cycle that you already know. We get rain, we get vapor and evaporation. And that cycle is something we all learn in grade school. Uh, we understand that the water moves around the planet in different phases. So in ice and liquid and gas. When people come into a space, we alter that water cycle. And so we call that an urban water cycle. So where we start to change the water cycle. In the case of municipalities here in Ocean County, we are usually drawing more water from our aquifers, which is beneath our feet in the groundwater. That's where we get our where we get our water from. Most of us in Ocean County get our water from an aquifer beneath our feet. And so when there's more people here in the summertime, we're drawing more water out of the aquifer. In addition, we're sending more wastewater or water that we've finished using into our wastewater treatment plants. And so uh, our wastewater goes to the wastewater treatment plant in Ocean County and then they treat that as best as they can and that water goes back offshore into the ocean. It does not go back into the ground to refill our aquifer. So uh, one of the things that we try at Save Barnegat Bay to teach everyone about is something called green infrastructure where we try to mimic nature by building something. Uh, so green infrastructure can be anything from a native plant garden to a rain barrel to a rain garden, which is basically just a native plant garden that holds water for a little while. And so rain gardens can help us move some of the storm water, which is water that falls from the sky and lands on the ground, and put it back into the ground where we get our drinking water from. So I know I went over that really fast and there was a lot of components there, but it's something that I think about a lot because obviously in the summertime, we just have so many more people here in Ocean County and water is something that all of us can't live without. So it's, it's always on my mind to think about where the water is going, where it's coming from, and how we can try to put it back into the ground, especially uh, because we all need drinking water. So that's my little, my little five minute thing on green infrastructure. <laughs> um, very cool. It's a kingfish, right? Porgy. Porgy. Or a scoff. Oh, Darren would be mad at me. Porgy fish. So beautiful silver, something we haven't caught before. So you can see a different location. So we have different salinity, different water temperature, different habitat. We see different fish. Um, and also, like you said, later in the season, we could see different fish. So this trip out, we have three different species so far, which is the oyster toadfish, the porgy, or also known as a scop. And then we have a, a ling as well, which is a little bit larger in size. I'm gonna have to hold him and then we'll put him back. So we didn't talk at all about our uh, location as far as salinity, temperature, anything like that. We're just south of the Route 72 bridge, which means we're, we're a fair distance from the Barnegat Inlet and we're even farther from the Little Egg Inlet. Uh, cool! Oh my goodness! This is a ling. Oh see. wait, raise your, raise your hands because they can, there we go, okay. A ling? Yeah, he has his feelers on the bottom. See his front of his head. Oh, like a catfish has. Mm -hmm. Similar. See that? I don't know the exact species, but it's in the link family or the cod family. I'm gonna put him back in the water though. Aww. So we can get some breath. All right. Definitely cool. So uh, we're fair, so we're a fair distance between the inlets right now. So the salinity here probably isn't as high as the ocean, which is usually in 32 parts per thousand. 
Uh, we're probably a little lower than that. Probably, if I had to guess, in the high 20s, uh, which is parts, parts per thousand. <laughs> that one I know. Yeah. I'm not arguing on that one. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So we're definitely in at least the high 20s, if not mid 20s, um, back here. Water's really warm, really comfortable to swim in. Uh, pretty shallow. Uh, it's only been about two and a half, three feet deep. Um, what else can we tell them? The bottom is kind of slippery, muddy. so it's kind of muddy, but kind of sandy. It's not as black muddy like the detritus but it's also not as hard sand pack like a sandbar, so it's kind of this in-between. Slippery. Slippery, extremely slippery. I'm in scuba boots and it's kind of hard for me to keep my treading. Um, what else can we tell them about this area? Did we have a lot of use fishermen in the background. Yeah, there's a lot of fishermen, so that probably means there's bigger fish. Um, also, there was, we see evidence of uh, plants, so we see eelgrass on the ground. Um, eelgrass on the ground in the rack line and we did see um, eelgrass floating in the water so there's definitely submerged aquatic vegetation or vegetation or plants that are rooted to the bottom of the soil somewhere over here nearby so that's good uh, but where we're walking we don't see a ton of that we see mostly just mud and then there's these big boulder rocks that i guess are here from their construction yeah construction they're not they're not native to barnegat bay not really so um we definitely it's like little landmines we got to watch where we pull the net or else we're going to get a big boulder in the net so what else can we tell them about where we are Anything? did i get it all um please know that you can ask questions so for those of you who are still on with us thank you for sticking with us uh, i'm going to turn around the camera and see if you have any questions for us please know that if i ever say anything that you need me to slow down. I get really excited, so <laughs> I talk fast, and so I don't realize sometimes if you're not standing in front of me to stop me and say, Grace Ann, I don't know what an exoskeleton is. It's totally okay to ask questions. So throw them at me. What questions do you have today? Throw them at us. And you can do this yourself. You can go to any bait shop and pick up a net. Walmart has nets, um, six foot, 30 foot, and you can do it at home for yourself. Do you have any questions? Uh, not yet, but just as a quick tip, if you do decide to go seining, uh, please keep in mind that you can't keep everything you catch. Um, every time we go seining, we throw everything back because we want it to thrive in the bay. Uh, but if you do have permission to keep it, whether it's a fish that's appropriate size to eat or use as bait, or um, as long as you keep within the count of legal allowance, like don't take more than you're allowed to take, uh, or if you have a scientific collecting permit, which we do actually have, but I don't use as often, um, just make sure you have the proper thing. So you please go fishing, please go seining, just respect those boundaries so that we can all have this resource um, in the future, obviously. And if you are fishing saltwater, try and register with the state of New Jersey. Yes, always get your saltwater registry. Very so that, important. Yeah, because that, while it's free, it still tells our leadership how many people are fishing and, um, you know, what time of year and everything else. So uh, it's a good thing to keep records. Um, does anyone have any questions? We have had an extremely quiet crowd today. No one wanted to guess where we were and no one's asking any questions. It's Thursday. I feel like I should start asking them trivia questions. <laughs> You've been watching for five weeks now, right? Hopefully. Um, I'm going to give you a pan view real quick in case there's anyone who wants to um, say hi. You could just say hi. I saw Keith was on, our friends at Beachwood Yacht Club, and our friends at Barnegat Bay Partnership. And I will just do a quick, quick little thing about our... Uh, book club because it has been really fun to see everybody during our virtual meet the author events so we did one with um, Close C for Kent Mountford and then we did one with Doug Tallamy for bringing nature home and nature's best hope and then uh, we have one coming up yet for um, Merce Ridgeway and his book The Bayman which if you haven't read The Bayman I absolutely love it um, and then I guess no one has questions, you can monitor that. But this month we are reading uh, A Sonnet in the Sands by Gordon Hess. It's a book all about Island Beach State Park. And if you haven't seen the book, it's really beautiful. It's not just full of facts, but it also has gorgeous photos. Kevin is actually featured as a photographer in that book. And that's not why I'm telling you about it because I'm really excited to read about the history. 
Um, and then we are working with Mr. Hess to get a Meet the Author event. So please stay tuned for that. Um, it's Thursday and next Thursday we'll be back saining, not sure where, so stay tuned. You don't know what we're going to catch. You don't know where we're going to be. Uh, 10 a.m. every Thursday. And what else? Check out our YouTube page. Uh, if you've missed any virtual events that we've been doing, we're making sure as best as we can to upload them onto our YouTube channel. Uh, it's Save Barnegat Bay. If you can remember Save Barnegat Bay, just Google Save Barnegat Bay YouTube, Save Barnegat Bay Facebook. We're on obviously all those different sites. So if I don't have any questions, you all have been real quiet today. Um, I can't think of anything else to tell you. So thank you always for tuning in and sticking with us. I hope you had fun today. We certainly did. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.